a lot of Nigerian artists are like doing mm-hmm. well, but these new guys, bro, bro. And you the see the way they are writing, like you see people that are writing like rapper level writing and singing like mad vocals yeah. as well. All right, what up, everybody? It's your favorite podcast man back again. I'm Michael Scenario. And I'm Murray Welcome, Kaya. And you are here on Menisms. And we got a special guest, as you can see. Wala, wala, wala. King of enjoyment. <laughs> one of your favorite artists out here, Mr. Ajabota. What's popping out? I'm good, I'm You all right? How are you feeling? You saying? I'm feeling good, man. Welcome to Menisms. Yeah. So, of uh, course, you guys know how Men- Menisms is. Make sure you subscribe to all our audio platforms, Spotify, iTunes, everything. Shout out to you guys. We're on episode eight already for season two. Yeah, actually. Mm. And we got a great topic today because, obviously, this man is trending right now. He has a new album out. Make sure you yeah, guys so get new it. albums out. Plug, 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 Soundtracks plug, plug, plug. to the good life. Listen to it if you want to be soft. Exactly. Mm, you heard cool. it here. So, we're going to get to know you a little bit today, yeah. Mr. Ajabata, but... Our topic today is really going to help a lot of people that are trying to get into the entertainment industry. Okay. And you have been in it now for, I would, from outside looking in, I'll say it's almost over 10 years now. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Very, so it's, well, I'm a pastor. Yeah, yeah. I'm a pastor. Was 20, was 20, 20, end of 2012. End of so, 2012, like, just about so, yeah. 10 that was years. My first, that was my first year of uni. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it has been a while. But how, how has the journey been? 10 years doing this so far. Yeah. What has the journey been like so far? And obviously, you're still growing and still trying to reach even new heights. So, mm-hmm. how's it been? It's been interesting, man. Like, the game has changed so much. Like, I know when I first, when, like, when we're plugging Omo Pastor and Sarah and those songs, like, then you still had to, like, carry, like, CDs and go to the radio station mm-hmm. and, and stuff like that. Shit. And then you had to, like, give, like, guys an alab by your song and all that stuff. So, at the time, me just coming into the game, and I wasn't in Nige, so I was abroad. So, I just had to, like, email all my all my stuff in. Right. But, like, to everybody, that was, like, super weird. Like, this guy is emailing his songs and not, like, you know, bringing a CD. Physically, yeah. You get? So, but it helped me as well because... You know, if you're emailing, I can email like I don't know, like hundred stations. I can mm. email someone. In. I remember like when I when we're dropping our pastor, I was sending a song to guys in like Quara, just like wow. randomly trying. Right. And then because the internet, even as a thing, like Twitter was had step popping off, yeah. but like yeah. as kind of like a way to share music. Mm-hmm. Like this was the f- like people were doing it like through like social media, just for the first time at this point. So it was very like to a lot of like OGs that were out and things like the status quo, that was not normal. So basically you were one of the pioneers now, should I say, in this millennial Gen Z market that actually started pushing Nigerian yeah. music online. Yeah. I mean it's done very differently now. Like mm, now yeah. like the online space, like the audience, the surface area is so wide. Yeah, even like the transitioning, the, like yeah, the whole, you go, now there's yeah, Instagram, there's TikTok, there's yeah. Snap, there's so many there's different so many, platforms. Yeah. Then like I feel like it was not that many. But then I just thought that this was the best way to do it. So, like, things have really evolved from then to now. Like, the artist, the kind of music, the level of the videos, even the writing style. Like, guy, the guys, I'm not, like, everybody, all the artists, are, like, a lot of Nigerian artists are, like, mm-hmm. doing well. But these new guys, bro, bro. And you the see... The way they are writing, like, you see people that are writing, like, rapper level writing and singing, like, mad vocals yeah. as well and have content have delivery have style like it's crazy but then let me ask yeah. you a question there are two things i want to ask now from mm-hmm. saying that and to all of you that were just paying attention now like there's a hustle now that you really were just describing mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. do it because he said one thing even with all that he said they had to, they had to go to alab Abi, alaba oh, yeah. so uh, for those that are listening all the ijgbs people like me that we don't <laughs> <'cause> <laughs> alaba. alaba for a second i was like alaba oh yeah i remember that term now like so what is alaba now for people to understand because Al- alaba yeah. markets so basically in, in terms of like music rights like you know you know you have like these series like these compilation series right? yeah so like when you're like that they, no, they don't hawk cds as much as, as they used to yeah, before. yeah yeah but before when you wanted to listen to music you buy a cd in traffic like an album so that's a distribution like oh, how okay. like in yankee you go to or like in jan you go to like maybe what hmv for they the shutdown and, and, mm-hmm. and, all that and then in those places like you have your cds and people just buy it off the shelf yeah our own version of buying off the shelf albums was people hawking your cd in traffic like your album, wow. right? All the time, because you don't even see it as much anymore. Yeah, yeah. And then they now have these mixtapes, which are like, they're like some DJs, like mm-hmm. some DJs like in 
like plenty DJs, they make these mixtapes of like 20 songs, 30 songs are the most trending songs. Now, all the bars that you go to, all the like beer parlors and stuff, they just buy that CD and put it in the CD player and that's the music for the day. Like some people of course have DJs, but you know, even like just in random places, and has, that's how the m- music was moving. That's how the mm. music is moving. So as an artist, sometimes if you're like blown, they'll just put your music on there. But even if you're not even, even if, yeah, if your music is like trending, sometimes they'll just put it on there. But a lot of times what happens is that you actually have to pay somebody to send out your song to all the main DJs uh. to now like, put it on their mixtapes. So would you say, yeah. so with you saying that now, because mm-hmm. obviously with the topic being how to monetize your talent, yeah. would you say you have to actually spend quite a bit or spend to a certain extent before you start seeing those returns? Because like you just mm-hmm. said now, I'm sure you've even heard, like when we hear rappers had to pay this DJ, pay this DJ, yeah. it's the same way here. So I'm saying, do you have to actually put money in a lot? Of course you have to put money in, but like it's not it's not a surefire thing. It's not like I put five naira in, I get ten naira out. Yeah. Music doesn't mm-hmm. work that way. And like it's different depending on your talent your timing the marketing you can get for free do you get like the marketing that you get based on your friends or just who you are or how much virality your music has just off the bat do you know what i mean yeah. then that just determines how far it's going to go there's so many factors so some people will spend i don't know they'll spend millions and millions and millions and they won't get anything maybe the music is not good maybe they are spending the money in the wrong way mm. it's like any marketing campaign you're doing if i want to market I don't know, like this ring, for instance. Yeah. Like, if I'm marketing this to the wrong audience and I'm spending a lot of money, it's I'm not going to get the result. But you're not getting yeah, yeah, but if the product is even not good, you know, it's or if there's good. no word of mouth, you know, it's, it's yeah. just a lot of stuff that okay. goes okay, into cool. it. So, so it's have, not, yeah, you have to spend money, but it's not like spend, spend one and get, get yeah. two. Yeah. So, so I have, so I mean, so we understand now that, mm-hmm. you know, this is how your music, could I say, kicked off. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. But before, before the music, since we're talking about talent, like, do you think, before you started music, you knew your talent was music, or was it something else? Um, like, what would you say that you were good at that you thought maybe you could turn into a money-making business based on the fact yeah. that it was your it was your natural talent? So I think, like, first of all, I knew I could write really okay. well. Like, okay. I could write bars like okay. very well. Like, I could write punchlines. I could write funny mm. stuff. Okay. And just generally, as a person. I feel like I do a good job observing things around me and right. being able to either turn that into like, like a, a story, a story right. or it can even be a solution. So like love, <laughs> like that's the reason why I I gravitated towards tech because really I just like seeing what's going on and trying to find a better solution. Like mm. this should not be like this. Let's do it like this. Okay. Mm. You know, that's like kind of how innovation is. So that's okay. why I think generally that I'm good at and I'm applied to both like tech and also to music, music okay. so like that's one and then also like us being able to write like i kind of like trained that over time okay like even before i ever recorded any song like okay. i'd been writing for quite a while i used okay. to listen to like a lot of like hip-hop and then as i continue to evolve that's when i started adding like singing and stuff like that okay. so and obviously like if you have passion for something that will always drive it's you always drive, yeah. first. So he said i had a question yeah. for you because i was laughing because he said he likes like He's observing post story, mm. so I was just laughing at Omar Pasto again because that is literally a storyline. Story, yeah. yeah. That's what but I said, making stories out. We're talking about talents now because you asked him when did you know your talent? When, did, when, what about you? Yeah. Okay, so since we're talking about talent, because what is your? I know you have your talents, <laughs> but it's like yeah. obviously because he's a rapper. Yeah. So you know numbers. the funny thing about me is that I'm very good at a little too many things, right? Mm. And they're all not necessarily interconnected. I'm. I, I was an athlete. Right. And, yeah, so, yeah, so I'm saying this because at some point I was thinking, should I, you know, venture into this? I used to swim professionally. Oh, I used mad. To, yeah, right. I used to um, play tennis as well professionally. So, it's something... So, you're just wasting. <laughs> so, you're just a waste. So, so, you see, but I think I think this is important because I don't think, you know, a lot of, especially in our generation, they didn't actually give us a lot of knowledge on flipping our talents into business because mm. they always wanted us to be Facts. doctors, Facts. engineers. Facts you know, mm. lawyers, stuff like that. Mm. So, a lot of that talent just seems like a hobby. That's what they, that's what they would call it. They'll tell you it's a mm-hmm. hobby. And mm. so, there was no part of me that wanted to develop that into a career because I didn't even know where to start, like you said. Yeah, you know, Because yeah, I was going to ask, yeah. you said something, but I'll get to the question. So, basically, when, when I discovered my own... Because t- I think my talent now is... So, I like fashion, but I, it's not just... Um, I get that my, my love for fashion also has its niche. Like, you mm-hmm. know, how you like fashion, but a certain type of fashion. So, I'm... 
I realized that I had the talent for really just reproducing. Um, so I love the vintage British, you know, type of fashion. Mm-hmm. What mm-hmm. you see in Boardwalk Empire, you know, mm-hmm. what you see in Mad Men, mm-hmm. those kind of TV shows. So, you know, over time, I now decided to, you know, turn that into a money-making business. But I don't, I still don't think that was something, that, to me, that was more like hunger catch me. But is it a talent? I would say it's a talent because in the end, I always, I'm always say I'm always jealous of people that are fashionable. <laughs> <laughs> so, watch this year, I'm going to upgrade my life. Because <laughs> I see people like you, that even you yourself, yeah. you're fashionable yourself. But um, him now, like, the tra- I'm, I'm like, you actually have to have a talent or an eye. <laughs> To know patterns, yeah. you know how to do this thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, like, yeah. Like, yeah. senior, there are a lot of senior fashion. Men. When you see them, say, ah, you just know. <laughs> but, but you know <laughs> what? Just leave out for them. Yeah, but you yeah. know what's funny? When we're talking about this talent thing, it's like, for me, my talent I always thought was sports the whole time. So like that's how I got into uni. That's how I got into my masters, and I got professional offers. But the way I knew it was I could monetize it was like after I graduated I got professional offers but then I was weighing the pros and cons I saw how much you can make in Europe I was like man my body can't take this anymore but then mm. at the same time I was like it'll be good money then that's when I said I want to try other stuff now funny thing is I used to watch a lot of the guys in the entertainment industry mm-hmm. for years as I said it's funny how 10 years have gone by yeah. but in that 10 years there's been such a a what's the word I'm looking for hmm Kind of progressive, t- yes, yeah. but progressive you know, in the music industry that made me start saying like, "Hey, maybe my talents can actually fit in here mm. somehow, some way." And the thing about monetizing your talent that I've learned is, if you think about, correct me if I'm wrong, if you think about the money first before your talent, money will never come. Mm, maybe not but never. Maybe not never. No, but I don't want to hear your opinions because for me, like the, way the new talent I have, which is the content creation, thing, doing all this stuff, it was always there. But this last year and a half, I had to. Ju- I just said, let me do it, and then mm. from doing it, that's when monetary like yeah, started opportunities coming. started coming. But mm. I realized, like you said, there's some people that do music, some people that do fashion early. Mm-hmm. That you're just thinking of the money, money, without focusing on the talent never comes. So, like, what's you guys' thoughts on that? I'm not. You know what? Like for me, to be honest, like when I started making music, I didn't have any thoughts of money <laughs> yeah. at all. Because I just wanted to do it because I'm like, I can't do this thing. Like, I can actually, like, do it. So, you just want to try. And you just mm-hmm. want to put, like, all your, you know, just, like, write and make songs. And then when you're, like, obsessed with that, then you then make songs. And then, but I don't think that the, your talents and the, your hunger, like, your, your financial situation or how much money you want to make, I don't think that they are attached to each other. Because if you are very good, and you know how to monetize your music or how to monetize your talent or you know how to go from like a talent to making money mm. you will do it like it doesn't i don't think it takes anything away if you know how to do that properly i'll give you an example someone like mr easy mm. mr easy is talented and he also like trust me like from knowing him like he's a guy that bro he knows how to make money from everything that he's doing like from the music that he's making and stuff mm. but like both of them are two different things like they don't like because you're good at one doesn't so mean would you say it's a because i, I still want to hear your answer but let me you ask you a question it, would you say it's a no. skill then because it's there's some people that are very talented that know like that talent they mm-hmm. can even show people how to do the talent but they don't know how to monetize would you not say that they're two separate would you say they're two separate skills like how does one skills, how does yeah. one figure out that skill to monetize their talent um, i don't know like it's just how you figure out any skill like if you have like you have to train it you have to you know you have to think about it. I think the first thing is to be aware, to think about it, and then put effort into it. So I actually don't believe that because you think of the money side of things, it means that you're less talented or mm. you wouldn't... If you are in it for the money, doesn't mean that... You can't be talented. You can't be talented. You get, if you are talented, you are talented. Nobody... Yeah. Not because you start thinking of money, then automatically the bars that you so know think, how to write will leave your head. I think that gray area yeah. with you know monetizing and mm. you know manifesting your talent... The reason it's always a thing, right, mm-hmm. is because it's not about the it's not about making money from the talent. It's about the decisions you make along the way. Mm. Because if you're focused on money, there are some decisions. For example, maybe a record label comes to you. They say they want to buy whatever you've done so far, right? Mm-hmm. And by buying, it means they have most of the ownership. Maybe they give you twenty percent. They mm-hmm. own eighty. Mm-hmm. If you're focused on the money as opposed to the talent. There are some people, again, of course, I'm not a music manager mm-hmm. or whatever it is, but this is just me talking off the top of my head. If I'm going for an 80-20 deal, mm-hmm. the money looks good. Mm-hmm. Because maybe it's a big record label like Mavens, for example, right? Mm-hmm. The money looks good in that at that very moment. Mm-hmm. 
But you see, someone who is not really there for the money would definitely sit down and think twice and be like, yeah, this doesn't sound like it makes sense for me because the plans I have for myself, I don't, I don't see myself being flexible with this if they now are the ones to own it because it means that I can't make full decisions, I can't call the shots, I can't blah, blah, blah. And in that time, you sit down, you sit back, and you be like, mm, you know, no, nah, I don't think, I don't, I think I want to run my own thing. This yeah. now, and you know, sometimes, like I said, the money is big money. They've put it there on the table for you. Someone that is hungry will sell that thing quick, right? And it's not because they are not talented, but at that mm. time, their You're hunger taking, yeah, for money for the, has now changed whatever but, decisions they can make. But I think that that's just taking a bad deal, though. That's just doing a bad deal. In that case, it's not because again, you are not talented, or it's not because, yeah, mm-hmm. like. Everybody that sees big money wants big money. Of course, you not. understand. Whether you get, whether you are, you see big money, you want money, mm-hmm. big money. But if yeah. you take a bad deal because you're not thinking of longevity of yourself mm-hmm. as an artist, then yeah. that's just a bad deal. That's not necessarily because if you know that this, even if let's say you're whack, mm-hmm. right? But you know that this music thing is going to continue giving me money. Mm-hmm. Do you understand? If I continue doing it, I'll continue getting money. You would, you would try and make, and you be like, huh. Let me not take this deal because it means I can't take another deal tomorrow. Whether you're good or not, it's just a bad business decision, in my opinion. I don't think like it has so much to do with like the music. So would general. you say in you saying that like, now the talent rather? Would, in you saying that there are two questions now for all of us here. Would you say that if you're somebody that knows you have a talent, mm-hmm. then it's also up to you to really educate educate yourself of course in the business side of this thing if you want if you want to monetize it because there's some people that are talented that just want to show their talent yeah also. of course if you want to do it like, for a living you like, definitely to be have, honest yeah. like even example wise like doing content at first it was just to do content mm-hmm. it's really in the last i'll be honest in the last few months that I said, okay, wait, this thing actually can make us like real uh, money. Now when okay. they're doing it, it's to choke for uh, no man. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I was like, ah, oh, okay, now like, I need to start figuring this out. But then my other question now was, um, do you not feel that for somebody that's talented, having a team or having a manager mm-hmm. is very key in terms of if you want to monetize it? Or do you feel like some people now, if you're smart enough, you can do it yourself? Because there are people that do either one. Because mm-hmm. having a manager can be good and bad whereby that manager now if they're good can plug you to the right opportunities mm-hmm. right people but then having a manager in the bad now means you're giving you're money you, you know industry. other things I mean, well, I mean, in the industry. so mm-hmm. like what do you what do you guys think about that so there, there's two things right one the one thing is like it's not just about being able to like having a manager is not just about oh as in somebody like knowing how to do it or whatever because <laughs> At the end of the day, you still have to split your time. You can't do everything. No successful person, I don't believe, has done everything themselves. You have to build a team. Mm-hmm. If you're starting a company, you, you're you not going to run it, everything yourself. You have to build a team that do different things, yeah. you know, as much as possible. Bring people in. You cannot be the smartest person in the world. So you have to bring in people that are smarter than you, are smart as you, have passion, have drive, are hungry, you know, just like you. So it's very important to have a manager on your side even if you are competent even if you are going through the deals even if you are doing that you just need someone to also represent you mm. because you can't do everything yourself and you also need like opinions like nobody is perfect and no, nobody's an island so i don't think like anybody should like try and just do it just them you get you definitely have to okay. do that and also being able to pick that person is also a skill like building a good team around yeah, you. Yeah, knowing the kind mm-hmm. of yeah, yeah. That's people. also it's okay, also that's fair. Important. I mean, so I think now we've kind of talked about the will I call it the homework side of this talent and everything. Mm-hmm. Else homework. <laughs> now, what we I really want to know is, and I guess even the audience will want to mm-hmm. know. Let's talk a little more about how you've been able to juggle personal life mm-hmm. with, you know, the music business. So you see, because your music business started off from more talent it wasn't like your it wasn't like a grass to grace i mean it was mm-hmm. you know you were still you were okay music was more a passion thing for you and mm-hmm. you broke into the industry yeah you know job bangers every every now and then now how how did that translate because of course a lot of your songs are songs that are very relatable <laughs> that and also i mean if also being honest there are songs that a babe hears she likes you for that song like an pastor now, if mm-hmm. I'm a babe and I meet the person who sang I'm a pastor, I like the guy more because I'm a pastor was a very relatable song, a very mm-hmm. good girl gone bad type of song, right? Mm-hmm. So, point now is how do you manage your personal life? Because 
I imagine that, of course, you have babes trying to meet you every now and then. You have even mm. your family, yeah. you know, saying that, oh, we don't like this kind of music you're putting out. How how are you able to like, or how are you able to joke? Because I'm sure that's just something till today you kind of, you know, sometimes um, have to struggle with. I think like you always, I think with your personal life, like you call it personal life for a reason, like it's your own, that's your own life. You can construct it however you want. And I've gone through so many different phases, like from when I started making music, to now like mm. there's a 10 year, like this is the whole 10 year <laughs> yes. period like Love that's my stories. whole you know beginning of adulthood or adolescence right. or i don't know what it's called yeah, yeah but that whole period like okay. so you're going to go through phases as a person as well mm. like you're going to have relationships you're going to be single you're going to adjust to different things there are going to be times when like you're very hot there are going to be times when you're not as hot there's so many different like phases and mindsets that you go through like there's some years that like ah now, like, you know, you just day on streets, you just day single, you just day for, you understand? <laughs> there's some, like, there's some times that you're reserved. Um, you just, and you, you want to build, outside, you want to be, wanna like, be. yeah. Mm. You know, you don't want to be outside or you don't want to be, like, doing certain things or you don't want to be seeing certain people. You just want to focus on one or two things. Okay. And that's how it is. So did, you, did you ever mm. have a, did you ever have, a, like, an incident, maybe, like, a relationship that was affecting your productivity or maybe a breakup ah. that kind or of changed. Or even, should we say, an, a relationship that affected your music. Yeah, that, or maybe like even mm. helped inspire your, inspire ah, your music. <laughs> Let's, good yeah. or bad. Right? I, mean, like, negative, exactly. I mean, I wrote a breakup song once, so there's that. Fair. Okay, yeah. so uh, it was based on... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah so that, that song hard for me. Yeah, that, that song was, was, was really good. But I like music because like, it also helps me like release and express. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Um, and I always put like small, small, small tidbits in different songs, like of, you know, what's happening with me on my personal. I won't always just like come and dump everything on you guys and stuff, but I'll put like different things here Was our pastor based on a true story? Um, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I'm going to lie to you guys. It wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't based on a true story. But it was a good, but it was a good. Yeah. But we knew. We knew. Wait, what about, if that's the case, you're asking that, what about bad guy? Because I can't lie. Oh, man. No, because I can't lie. Bad guy felt very direct. Like, because me, because you're wearing a ring. (laughs) <laughs> you're not combing your hair you're, you're, you're keeping yeah. your bed i'm like this is stereotypical nigerian yeah. and yeah. what's the word i'm looking for when parents will say just look yeah. at you like, yeah. like i said like i write a lot of stuff based on observation like things no, i see i right, find funny right, but right. that bad gang won and what happened was I remember I had gone for, I think it was Olamide, that Olamide's Oli Show or something. Oh, like when you used to do Oli at the course? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'd gone for that like one year. I think like I'd left like with my family Christmas party to go mm, and perform. Okay. Yeah. And okay. I didn't come okay. back home that night. I still used to live at home that year okay. when I recorded the song. Right. And I remember that my mom sick. The night I had, I can't even just discuss it, but <laughs> it, was a, it was a mad one still. Okay. Um, and my mom called me like in the morning and she's like, Yo, where are you? This one. I'm like, Yo, I slept at my friend's house. <laughs> and then she was now like, like the phone call, like how she spoke to me that morning was basically like bad gang. Like she was just like, So you're sleeping on the streets? <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, you're acting like a, someone that doesn't have home training, right? Et just like yarning all, like, you know. She just went off. Yeah, she was just going off, like going off on me, like that for being like outside. Mom, and I'm right? just like, Bro, like, <laughs> And I just remember, I remember around that period as well, like just before that, like when I had moved back to Niger, like I used to wear black a lot, not for any particular reason, it was just easy. Just like, yeah. yeah. No like I just had a lot of black on, stuff. Yeah. So my mom was now asking my sister, this boy, is he in a cult? <laughs> <laughs> I was, guy, that was so funny to me. So like that whole thing, like everything, like the idea of bad gang is like, these people look at us normal people yes, yes as, as like bad guys like i look relate at young to that song so much because it's like like, uh, like some crazy people because like you have a ring or your hair short skirt meanwhile we all have well, but sure all everybody, the same thing. everybody here has a degree now everybody's you working on the rest of they do so it's like yeah, why are we get, judged do you get yeah so it was just about like i was just making fun of like the way older people like sort of like judge um, what, the younger yeah, generation yeah, yeah, the younger generation like how they just look at what we do and like they're just like yo like why are these people like this so yeah that's what like the whole song was I have a funny story now yeah. that you just reminded me of that and I've not even told anybody this story because my cousin just sent me the video shout out to my cousin Victor by the way but those old look years I used to be at every single concert that's when I would travel back like yeah. you know it's good about you come back for December all that yeah. so the funny thing is this guy actually I, when you say you performed I remember now because yeah. I'll, I'll actually send you the video my cousin <laughs> my uncle used to have a table at all those other concerts 
So we'll watch all the artists. So me and my cousins now will just be talking like, yo, like, you saw these artists and like, we feed you. I'm, like, we're not talking about talents and all that. So then I just bought an on stage one time. We're just like, wait, these guys are aged now. <laughs> <laughs> they just performing like bad, one of those songs, like bad guy. And yeah. you sit to the video and you mm-hmm. even see me now. Like me, I'm wearing my earring and you have my small beard. And I'm just like, you know, I fuck with this song. It is, like, I could yeah, relate to it and all that do, now. Yeah. But it's just like, yeah. just saying that now, I'm just like, it's crazy how this 10 years now, yeah. like the way it has just, things have progressed. Like even the idea, the thoughts of parents now. It's funny mm-hmm. how 10 years ago when Bad Gang, a few, I don't even know if it's 10 years, but a few years ago when Bad Gang came out, all these songs came out that a lot of us were starting these mm-hmm. things now. I would say a lot of us were pioneers Yeah, in our yeah. generation because, yeah. like you say, the stereotypes, the thoughts of parents, like mm-hmm. we're the ones starting it. Now this Gen Z era now a lot of them it's easier for them to do certain things that they're not a lot of criticism towards them yeah but then it's also like from up is like it's always like that like from one generation to the next to the next to the next like there's always more opportunities there's always more like because of like innovation and stuff there's like new things are starting Mm -hmm. like new industries are being created the jobs that we think of now now, yeah people are more like you know, the job positions are just like that exactly. exists. Exactly, wow. things that yeah. we we now that we'll, we'll be seeing well, that exists. Like that's how they felt about things like music. Like yeah. if they want to be like a music manager, I want to be an E and R before they're like, what? Or oh, I want to even go into text things like that. Like yeah. what's the future yeah. in that? True. But now. Like those, or if you even say you're working remote, you're, you're at home every day. What work like, are you doing? Let, <laughs> you know, so no, no, me, this is good. This is, this is good because let me let me even tell you. Up until when I was, up until about two years ago. So I think yeah, it was shortly after the covid mm-hmm. lockdown mm-hmm. so i've always kind of been a so i'm an architect professionally right? mm-hmm. and on some days if my work is behind the computer i don't i don't really need to commute and you know the way i'm thinking about okay now let me see i need to go to an office two hours to get there mm-hmm. okay when i'm done i'm not two hours come out sometimes i just think there's no need for this like mm-hmm. i can do all my work here send all the emails i need to send here and facts it, now God. there were times when maybe my dad would randomly call me and you see he's from the older generation right so he'll call me and he'll be like oh What's up? Where are you? I'm like, I'm at home. It's like, ah, no work today. I said, I'm at home. I'm working. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then, and then he said, ah, what kind of work is that? That's, you know, there's something about having an office. Yeah. No. So I had to like, you know, kind of conform and just show up at the office to just be like, and I was unhappy. I was like, I don't, I don't see the need for being for here doing today. All like, if I, I had mean, a physical like meeting, then for yes, the other gen, it's nothing that you can even explain to them. You it's already yeah. you put in their it's heads. Now, it's now. That's it. That's why I was so happy for COVID because now COVID made them understand. Oh, forced them. That yeah, you forced them to understand. Like, yeah. hey, Productive you can actually stay at home and Zoom. You can, you know. And so I had to literally tell them to walk back from that mindset because mm. see, it's not, it's not by showing you're busy. I had to ask him. I said, okay, I've been at home for the last week. Are you not seeing results? I mean, you asked me for a few things. I, I did I not send every day. Yeah, so, so just like, went, huh? You did deliver. exactly like you said you would. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, so I, I agree with you when you say things change. But I wanted to ask something regarding this generational change. Now, you know how you spoke about music mm-hmm. changing over the years. Mm-hmm. How has that like? Do you, is that a is that a plus for you now? Are you happier now where it is, or would you have preferred the older system? No, I'm I'm way happier. Like in terms of well, music, yeah, I'm definitely like the sound of the music and everything. I'm definitely happier. I now. mean, even like I mean, even like how like how you're able to push music or people appreciate your kind of music, you know, stuff like mm. that. Because you know, sometimes the newer technology isn't always better for the people who were mm-hmm, used mm-hmm, to the older mm-hmm, version. Yeah. So how does that, how does that like, fit, how does, how do you fit into this new system? Everything, though? everything is fine apart from TikTok because I don't know anything about TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, no, I'm just, right? I'm just messing with you guys. Right, yeah. But yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I don't like, I'm not like great on, on that. But like, I, like, I like, I like everything that's happening. Mm-hmm. The only thing I'd say is like, things are slightly too fast. Like the way music is, Mm. It's, it's like you it's don't get to fast. appreciate like, yeah. like certain songs like back yeah. in the day like you said when songs came out even if it took some time you took time to listen and appreciate mm-hmm. it and they every in, day yeah. there's song release song release it's just like t- it's just like TV series as well and like you know before if something like even like Game of Thrones, like all those shows, like yeah. Prison Break, that yeah, year, yeah. like is one episode you wait a week, another episode like it was like that, like a whole season is like. Yeah, spending like a year or six months watching that show yeah. and you're living with the and show. So it's constantly now you everything, all the ten episodes, whatever, you is out today. You have finished you every, every everything today, <laughs> yeah. and that's it gone. 
Right. Like these people have spent like a year, two years making, and then tomorrow you are in the actors' DM, you are in the producers' DM. When is the next episode out? I was like, bro, they did not just drop yesterday. Are you mad? <laughs> like appreciate? Are you it. people mad? Appreciate it. Yeah. So it's, it's right. I mean, so it has its pros and cons, basically. Yeah. So let me yeah. let me ask you guys now. I don't, let me. So I don't like the the speed. I I would say in terms of the music industry now. I actually, it sounds funny, but I'm an old head where mm. I prefer the old school time because, like you said, you got to appreciate it more. And with this internet age of song, 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 it's like a microwave. It's like it comes and goes, comes and goes. And you artists, tell me, m- maybe I'm wrong, correct me if I'm wrong. I feel like a few years ago, we were more invested in, at least in Nigeria, let's speak of Nigeria. Mm. We were more invested in artists like you guys mm. a few years ago compared to now. Maybe I'm wrong. Like the Gen Z artists, mm-hmm. like for example, like the Gen Z artists now, like the Remas, all them, mm-hmm. their generation have their art, they have their core fans that are invested yeah, yeah. in them. Mm-hmm. But then like the millennial artists, as I like to mm-hmm. say now, I feel like there was more of an investment a few years ago because it artists? wasn't a, yeah. Because it wasn't a microwave era where there's so many things. It's like you knew the guys that were doing the thing now. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know. I don't. I, I. I don't know because I'm not them, so I can't say fair, how. Fair. Yeah, I don't know how invested I guess like, their fans. So for me, I always look at it from two ways: as a fan and somebody yeah. that knows these people. Right. So yeah, I think, so, not, I think from the fans' answer. perspective, mm-hmm. I get what he's saying. So let me give you. A, it's just paint a picture now, right? Like a. Like a Wonder Woman. Mm-hmm, Wonder mm-hmm, is, mm-hmm. you know, Mavens. Who? Mm-hmm. Wonder Woman. Mm-hmm. Mavens. Yeah. Wonder oh, the, okay, mm-hmm. okay. Now, now, right? If you put that against an Omo Pastor. Right, I mean, mm-hmm. it's not even like a comparison. These are two great songs, right? Mm-hmm. These are songs that trended. If you play now, if, if you play on Pastor in any party now, people will still vibe to it. Mm-hmm. But the difference now is that, because what he's trying to say now is, so you see, Oma Pastor would have had a lot of, like you said, pushy sense or laba sense to this mm-hmm. place, get to that guy, speak to this DJ. But one Amo just needs one TikTok. I want TikTok challenge. And the thing is, even with yeah. you saying that, you just remind me of a point. You see what's funny? Because I just realized, I'm like, we keep talking about his old songs, even though you have the new songs mm-hmm. now, yeah. which we still like, right? Mm-hmm. But you see, from that time that there was more of an investment put oh. in, oh. it makes us want to stay with, at least that's what I'm saying in Nigeria, it makes us want to stay with the artists that we see your progression, see your mm. journey through it, compared to some new songs that is like a microwave, where TikTok trend, when you hear the song in the club, hey, but we then. don't give a damn about the artist, yeah. to be honest, like, eh, who's Just the guy? Eh, okay, but yeah. artists like you guys a few years ago were invested in you guys. Right. So mm. I think I think what, what, is, what he's trying to say, basically, so you see, an artist can drop a single now, and really blow. Remember when Ashake first came and he did uh, Mr. Money? And uh, yeah, Mr. Mr. Money yeah. was a jam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the next thing just appeared. Mm-hmm. Before he now came back and mm-hmm. he rebranded, did everything. Mm-hmm. Now, Mr. Money was in the era of social media, mm-hmm. pushing a bit of music here and there. So, you know, it's easy for someone to drop a hit like that. People like just the song, but not necessarily resonate with the artist. Mm. Yeah, but As that... opposed to then, mm-hmm. a the band to drop a song. It's, it's you not care about the band, you, you care about song, you care yeah. about more hits, you care about yeah. Let me tell you guys something, let me tell you guys something. It means, it, like, in the industry, they say, like, when your song is bigger than you, yeah? And that usually happens when the artist is new or when the artist maybe just has, like, maybe one hit or two hits or maybe the, the artist doesn't have, like... Um, a catalog. Br- like a catalog or doesn't have, like, very good, like, personal branding and stuff. Mm. So okay. when that happens, like, for instance, I'll give you an example, uh, Zazu, Portable. Mm-hmm. Portable as a brand is as big as his songs. Yeah. Yes. His songs, you I get. Agree. Because Even bigger, of the... Actually, yeah, because, <laughs> because of bigger. his personality <laughs> and his personal brand and how he's yeah. come out. Yeah. But that, like, at the time when Ashake dropped Mr. Money, the song was bigger than who he was because... That's probably like his only song, his only blown song blown at song, the time. Yeah, yeah, Do you get? And nobody like really, maybe he hadn't done like a lot of image work, or mm. he, so he yeah. has himself hadn't like maybe didn't have enough money to push out videos back to back or whatever. So we didn't really get the full picture of who the artist was. But by the time he dropped album, like by the time he you know dropped other singles and had like and more had, like, consistency yeah, back to back, yeah, that will now make him as an artist like more noticeable mm. so yeah. with you so with you saying that this is the other part of our mm. question now because of time we know menism people were always struggling with time but <laughs> yeah. what would you say are some of the struggles now to monetize your talent and again for everybody understanding the reason we are talking about mm. music industry is because our guest obviously is in the music industry mm. but i mean for anybody in general yeah um if you have a talent what would you say at least from your own personal experience have been some of your struggles at least we'll all go mm. around now and see our own struggles I think, yeah I think, wait i think for a better way to frame that question 
you say the struggles, mm-hmm. but do you think it's harder for a man, like the mm-hmm. fact that you're mm-hmm. a man, to break into the industry than mm-hmm. it is for a woman? I mean, this, this is okay. not a gender, but we want to know. That's a good, that's yeah. a good like, perspective. You know, like how you said you observe. That's mm-hmm. even a perfect yeah, thing. So yeah. Because you observe, do you think it's been harder being a guy that some opportunities just would have been easier for you, but because you're not a babe, they didn't okay. give you like you so know, what was the first question was um, some of the struggles yeah, struggle, yeah. yeah. monetize your okay talent. so like being able to monetize monetize your talent i can't lie it's a lot easier now than like before okay. um there's so many tools to help and like if you do enough research and like you just spend time it's actually you have to actually be deliberate because it's it's not easy especially like in the creative and entertainment space especially in africa it's, it's not always been easy like even like this podcast that we are on now, like what we're doing now, mm-hmm. monetizing this like a while ago wasn't as easy. Yeah, do you true, understand? True. Now you can just put it on a platform and push it, and then you get paid. Do you know what I mean? Mm. But it wasn't that easy. But you definitely have to do research. It's like it's not the sexy part of the business, but it's very of the work. Like you know, recording, talking. If you're in studio, whatever. That's like the sexy part. Um, having to check your analytics and follow up with your publishing and stuff. Sort of the, yeah. yeah, that is not sexy. Yeah, and that's speaking to point. So it's not like... <laughs> it? yeah. But yeah. there are ways to do You just have to like proper like research it and like go deep into it. And then, yeah. you know, if you're deliberate enough, you get it. Again, it's a talent, so it's a skill. So yeah. you might be 10 in making music and 5 in monetizing. Or you might be 10 in monetizing and 5 So in are you whatever. saying that if you're so, somebody that's going to go into the creative industry... Mm-hmm. We either you can do either either you deliberately do it yourself or get somebody that can do it if you know that it's not something that you're interested in or passionate about, but you just have that, to find it, find a way around it. Then yeah. his other question yeah, so now yeah, was so, so, so I was, mm-hmm. was not asking like so being a guy, like mm-hmm. you know, has that have you have you has sat back sometimes and be like, Oh my if I be a woman now, if I don't collect this thing I, I, I've have them at this moment. I'm not gonna answer after him because I have something to say. <laughs> yeah, what? I have something to say after Oh yeah, go go on, go first. Go first, go first. I would say mm-hmm. for me, let me be very honest. Mm-hmm. Like I've been in Lagos now for four years. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously longer. I moved here at 17. But mm-hmm. in terms of, I'll say professional, my years. career, mm-hmm. and all that, four years. And from noticing so much, it's not easy for both sides. Mm-hmm. I'll give that yeah, disclaimer. Yeah, of course, yeah. Now, obviously, as men, we mm-hmm. see the we see from afar the side where a lot of women get, th- it seems like they get things easier. Mm-hmm. Because obviously, as a mm-hmm. woman, fine girl, Fingers, a lot of the people in the position yeah. are men and all that. So it's like, oh, you guys seem to get easier. Like, you see this week, they've been doing this podcast about the way some girls now are getting stuff from shows, yeah, all yeah, that yeah, stuff yeah, yeah. and all that. But I'll say as a guy... It can be easy, but it depends on a few factors. One, how you manage your relationships. And two, how you put yourself out there. And so what I mean is that a lot of people now, for example, like you say, even if you're somebody that has the talent, Mm -hmm. the question is, how hungry are you to get yourself known out there? Like we talked about it in Lagos in one of our episodes where a lot of times you go out to events, you go out to certain things where you might not want to go to. But guess what? The person you need to see is there and all that. So I think as a guy, your hunger can help, can make you like... Your hunger or the way you position yourself can get you into places compared to sometimes as women now. Well, let me not say that. I'm trying to be more political with the women because you know we no, have a lot say, of... No, say your church mind now. Say, say your church mind. My honest mind is like with women too, they have to be smart in how they position themselves. Mm-hmm. But the lucky thing is if you're smart, if you're a fine girl, you'll use that to your advantage. Fine boy doesn't get us anywhere. So the thing mm-hmm. is, I, I mean, I've, I've, had, I've had instances where it's a, it's, it's a problem. But I think I've had more cases where it was less favorable because I was a guy or because I was not a babe, right? In and your industry? Yes. Mm. Interesting. And I'm saying, this, I'm saying this particularly because I like the fact that you said it's not easy for both sides because mm-hmm. just because it's easier doesn't mean like... Because as much as we're saying, oh, if you're a fine girl, don't forget there's there that other side yeah, as a fine girl that yeah. that man will come and meet you yeah, for. There are things at stake that the guy wants, you know, in mm. in uh, in return for whatever favor, favor mm-hmm. they are doing for you, right? So... um. I guess what it is is the reason why it seems harder for guys is because we're not even presented with that type of opportunity. Because to be honest, if they say that, oh, you know, there are some guys that if they if they give you if they say, okay, I'll give you this, but this is the condition, mm-hmm. instantly we're going to go for that opportunity. If if for example, maybe the person in power is a a woman, right, mm-hmm. or even a man, but then he says that, okay. Um, I can I can give you this opportunity, but you see, most times they they they, they streamline it to the actual worth of what we're presenting to them. So let's say I'm going as a fashion designer and I'm trying to have someone sponsor my next collection, mm-hmm. and 
you know, the people I'm moving to are maybe like owners of finance houses and stuff like that, right? Preferably someone who also likes fashion mm -hmm. and things that they want to invest in it. And so he, you know, grants me a meeting. Now, to even grant me a meeting, he's going to look at the fact that I'm not, I'm, a, I'm not a babe, and he's like, okay, this is your guy again. But if I was a fine girl, just by my appearance, he's already going to grant me that meeting, right? Now, whether or not I'm able to offer him what he wants is now a different it's table up to you as when I cross that door. Yeah. So you see, that already has given one leg into the to a woman as opposed to a guy. But of course, not saying that guys don't get that opportunity as well. So, are we, so you're saying basically Man. like it's easier to... Not that it's easier... Again, we're just speaking our minds, like mm -hmm. you said. S to at least enter the door. Get well, we're talking about in our area in Lagos, yes. in Nigeria. For women, sometimes it seems like it's easier to at least enter the door. Yes. Whoever, whether they get the deal, we don't know. Yes. But to at least yeah, enter the door. But then we're door. talking about being... To, let me be honest with you guys. Eh? Like, 100%, as someone that's been in the entertainment industry, I can categorically tell you that it is... Well, from my own opinion, what I've seen, mm -hmm. it is like, at least to... Is like ten times harder for women. I'm not gonna lie. For men or women? For women in mm. your industry. Yeah. Yes. Now I, let me explain. I, I agree for the for the for the fact that first of all, if it was easier for women, there would just be more more blown female artists, more female more, artists. Yes, out there. I agree. Okay. I'll first of all, okay. off yes. the bat, then if you just think of like what it, ordinarily the cost of a male artist and a female artist it's not the same thing women have to worry about styling they have to worry about mm, hair appearance. they have to worry about mm, like right. so many things even like when they are performing like a lot of if you watch like a lot of female artists performing a lot of them have dancers a lot of them have like the man you can just come and like you know raise your hand and shout and like <laughs> that's it really so there are those things even your team like the team that you put together like as a man and a woman it's not the same a guy you can pull up midnight to a show just you and maybe one person, not just you, you on your ones. Good, yeah. You can go for any opportunity. You can go anywhere. You don't have to think of, oh, is this dangerous for me? Is this this? Even oh. the fact that there's a term female artist in Nigeria. Exactly. Like, already the fact puts, that there's something like, puts, like female mm, artists. Like, oh, this is a female artist. Do you understand? It's like, when you think about that, if it's a, if it's a, if I'm, if I'm a man, I'm an artist. I'm just an artist. I don't say I'm a male artist. I'm just exactly. an artist. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So that also puts that. Then the way we even listen to music traditionally, like as in us Nigerians, like mm -hmm. I don't know if it's the same thing like around the world, but even the way like we, the tone of music we listen to, the what we're used to, like the kind of hits, the kind of sound that we're used to, is more like stuff that male men would actually put out. Yeah, that men do, like that men yeah. put out. You get so I don't really see many ways where like a female artist like. In music, like I don't really see the advantage. You can say Ooh, like that's a good getting into the door. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. You can say like getting into the door, but someone that is serious, a serious label, a serious person that owns that is working is that running mm. uh, they a serious bro. Business, yeah. They are there for business. They are there to return the investment. They are not there for fine girl. Like yeah, it won't be bro. Crazy. Like at if they if they are calling for fine girl, then they are not like most times they are not even trying to advance people, your yeah. your career. So that's not really going to like help you just like saying there is maybe um an artist who is also um like really really popular or like maybe like has plenty babes or maybe mm -hmm. sells like maybe some maybe like sells drugs at the person wants that's also like a reason for someone to call you into a room but then that person is not calling you for once you have finished what they want to use yeah, it for yeah, they're yeah. going to tell you to okay. bounce so yeah so, so I, there's I no agree. i don't I think that, that you're going to get think, like i think peculiar, many benefits yeah i think yeah in fact i feel like it's actually a lot, a lot like, yes no, so even it, from people that i know i've seen i've spoken to yeah so yeah. peculiarity for the music industry i would say that you know because the music industry mm -hmm. is not exactly like getting into the door mm -hmm. is actually like the least of your worries yeah. In most cases, especially when it comes to, because mm. it I would say least you know is a worry. Shah, you know, it's a serious worry. Yeah, there's a lot. You know, I'm you know what I'm saying this because, like you said, a record label that is serious about talent and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Fine, even if you get your leg in, if you're not talented, your leg in was no, was usually not your problem. Like as a as I imagine as a female artist, it's your actual talent that is your major worry. Like. You need to be sure your you talent, your talent. branding, your pushing, exactly. your marketing, everything. So that's why I said that. Everything. Getting, getting into the door might not necessarily be like... It's a problem, yes, but it's not your top. Because really, if you get if you get to... Even getting into the door, like getting into the right door. Bro, trust me, there are a lot of labels that say, I don't want female artists, not stress. There are a lot why, why, of labels. Why do you think they say that? Because it costs yeah, a lot. Because it's, it's okay, expensive so, and because okay. like the um, the industry in general... 
it's not as responsible. Yeah, it's not as with, not, saying, with him saying, saying, with him saying guess, that now, like, I'm in the entertainment industry, but I'm not an artist. Like, I'm more of like, nightlife, I do yeah, events, events, nightlife, yeah. content, all this other stuff, right? So, like, for me now, I've seen, I've worked with a lot of female artists and male artists, whether they come to my events or we do other mm-hmm. stuff. And obviously, I've seen personally, this is my own view from the outside, I've seen more male artists that started at a certain point to blow quicker than yes, the female no. artists. Yeah, more. Now, more with the times. female artists, like, even you just saying that made me think about it because I'm thinking about it now, like, especially in our market of Nigeria now, I feel like it's harder for women to blow, not even just behind the scenes of what goes on, even just the sound, like you say, and all that. I don't know, maybe if I'm wrong, more male songs, like, they mm-hmm, resonate no. with everybody compared to certain female songs. Like, we're not, I don't think Nigeria's at that place yet. Yeah, but it's also, like, the tra- it's kind of, like, I'll say a bit of the traditional way of thinking in that when women, like, the kind of music that we listen to mm-hmm. is a lot of, you know, being Manly. Manly. Like, Manly. Like, Manly. 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 Yeah. So, so, yeah, so, because, and, and then, like, the way we are also, like, wired to think originally that like, I female music, a lot of like, R&B, R&B, soft, soft do you understand? Ah, so, that's, those, those are the artists okay, that they now, like, okay, try okay, to fair. position, do you get? Like so, a Tiwa Savage, um, Yemi Alade. Yemi Alade. It's like you have to sing as a woman. Whereas, yeah. like, no, you can do other stuff. Yeah, even if, like, even if it's the singing that they're doing, the point is that the way our own music is, like engineered is like Afrobeats bing 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 you guess mm-hmm. it's like so when a lot they bring in like a soft army yeah. it feels like it's a targeted crowd and yeah and then if, and then they're, they're only now looking number. for they're now like saying oh female artist she has in fact if you even look at most labels like you would hear like first lady of this record label you, you've heard that yeah too, I've yeah. heard that yeah. first lady why because they are literally only signing one if you one, look, look, one at, female, I mean, like, look at me they're not signing like a lot of women Mavens is all guys and one girl I mean there could be more DJ I don't think she's part of who DJ. I don't know. Don't know DJ. Talk, okay, wow. <laughs> I apologize. I'm Bruh. sorry, DJ. If you're listening, I respect Bruh. you. I don't know you. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm saying for what I've seen on Mavens, like yeah. the lineup. Currently, I've only yes. seen Aria Star yeah. so far. Yeah. On the lineup, yes. and it's like you're right. Even um, DMW, there's one girl. What's her name again? Um, I, I can't remember her name. See either. the fact that we are the fact that we don't. This. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. No, so I agree, and I think I think I think it ends up coming to a 50-50 because mm. depending on the industry, because I have seen, for example, in the content creation industry, right. It's not, I'm not even saying it's easier, but I have seen firsthand that you know some women get. Bro, it's deals. easier. It's easier. It's easier. <laughs> sorry, that, <laughs> that's my I will say right now, if you're, I'm so sorry. Look mm. to all the girls that are making money. I respect you because it's because of you guys I started this shit. That's the funny thing. I started content, yeah, cre- even my actually, content same, same. being targeted towards women. It's because I see how these girls won't get the numbers, and the girls were telling behind the scenes, I'm going to meet these girls. Yo, how much you making on this thing? How do I do this? These girls were telling me how much they making on content. And the funny mm. thing is, again, this is not an attack. I'm just being real. With this is men, it's being real. As I said, sometimes we talked about earlier where your talent sometimes, it no matter how good your talent is, how you position yourself. Because some of these, if you compare it, some guys now, their content is mad, it's mm. different. Some girls, their content is okay, it's good, but they're gorgeous, they're fine. Which means the positioning they're going to be yeah. in, you're going to get those deals quicker. Yeah. You're going to enter those deals, at least for content. Wait, Artists ca- well, let me ask you a question. Go mm-hmm. ahead. Let's, who are the top 10 content creators in Nigeria? Can you try? It's a very, it's a very I'm just, I actually just want to know. Personally, mm-hmm. I don't know the names of guys off head. And no, I no, no, just try, just try, just try. Um, there's um, this guy that has a gap. Do you feel uh, like... Machala. Uh, Kata. Kata. I mean, yeah. Kata. 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 the guy that has yeah. a gap. Okay. Mr. Macaroni. Okay. Mm-hmm. And... Okay. So, Caramel sugar. She's big. She's very big. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. She's to, very big. Mm, mm, um, um, I was about to say Miss DSF, but <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I like her. So I mean, yeah, I no, but I don't, I don't think um, for content creation. No, content yeah, creation. Yeah, I, I don't. I personally don't know. How about Sabinus? Sabinus. Yeah. 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 Sabinus. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Maraji. Maraji. Mm-hmm. Oh, Maraji. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. good point. Um, um, there's one girl that speaks. Of course. Um, there's one girl that speaks. Brother Shaggy. Brother Shaggy. Yeah. Hundi. Mm-hmm. Um, there's one girl that speaks. Omotara. Have you heard of her? Yeah, I think it's Tama. I don't know. Yeah, that's Tama. Tama. Yeah. Yeah, already said Tama. Um. um See, if you say biggest, it's hard to think. But if you say content creations, I can mention base, 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 base. <laughs> no, I'm not saying mention base or mention biggest, guys. Biggest. I'm just saying the just biggest. Yeah, the biggest. Um, okay, off head. That's all I can think. Uh-huh. I don't know okay. names of. No, no, they're even. I mean, of course, Chris Clown is also. Chris Clown, okay. 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 But he's not in Nigeria. So, uh, though, this he's is Yankee. He is in Nigeria. So, so, Chris Clown's yeah, in Nigeria. He's in Nigeria. I thought he's a Yankee guy. No. But he's not. Nigerian, Nigerian content cre- as in. I mean, he's Nigerian. Yeah, yeah exactly. He's in Nigeria. Okay, one more, one more. Let's see. 
There's one girl you know, that speaks, one small girl that does it with macaroni. She has braids. One funny girl like this. She'll be wearing glasses like she's a pastor's um, wife or pastor's And she's mom. top 10. Um, well, she get numbers. I ain't gonna lie. I look at okay. numbers sometimes. Like, oh, this girl had numbers. Mm. Okay. I forgot her name. Now, though. okay, let's... The, the three um, females that... The three women that you guys have mentioned now. Yeah. Um, Tauma, uh, Marjorie, Marjorie, Marjorie and, uh, um, uh, Caramel. And Caramel, Caramel Sugar. Do you think any of them got to where they are because of looks? Or because of... Because of some somebody putting them in now, positions, no, no, so or something. That posi- they, they, are, they are funny people. No, no, don't get me wrong. No, don't yeah, get so me wrong. Talent will always show have, itself. Yeah, I don't but think any of saying, those people. No, so for apart any, from them, like, because that's ten content creation. We're looking. Wait, 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 that's what I asked you guys. Okay, that's what you said. Mid- now, okay, the reason why I said is a mid level. So those are the biggest. But if you're looking at, let's say, the mid level. Or, mm-hmm. okay, so somewhere like me, I would say, like, I'm, I'm big in my own way, thank mm-hmm. God, you know, but I'll still say I'm at a certain level because I'm not at that level mm-hmm. of these guys, right? So, in that mid level that you're doing well in your own field, there are a lot of so women you're saying in influence, Nigeria. Like, you're saying more like, uh, Inf- okay, influencers just, then? Should we say, I mean, that's probably a better oh, word to influ- use. Exactly. Maybe that was a better that's word to use. Thing. Okay, mm-hmm. I, I, I respect what you're saying now. Okay, because okay, so there's, there's a difference between influencer and content creator. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, more guys you see why we have mm-hmm, conversations mm-hmm, on this show mm-hmm. guys this yeah. is why it's good to yeah. talk but influencers so influencer women, wise mm-hmm. i would say they're more women definitely influencers definitely. that men influencers definitely. not that they're more i don't know the no numbers, no that's but actually, what i'll say no, but is in terms of the who's no, getting the true. money in terms of the impact money yeah but you have to a lot see, these women yeah, are look at this so I'm, I'm trying to give us a i don't want us to have confirmation bias i don't want us to have an idea and stick to the idea we don't have stats now but let's try and look at it let's try and be as objective yeah of course possible so when you're saying influencers now, right? Mm-hmm. How many men actually try to be influencers or want to be influencers? Not that many compared to women. It's compared to women. Correct. So yes. it is actually like very reasonable. Well, well, market, market, no, no, no. But let me ask you because, because like, I'm even going to ask you that. Does the market know, allow? Not, uh, but does the, in Nigeria mm-hmm. now, does the market allow? So for example, mm-hmm. both of us now have mm-hmm. actually become influencers, mm-hmm. content creators. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'll even say for me, when I was making my content, it took me a while to think, what am I going to do? Because the market we're in, Mm-hmm. To do content that guys will resonate with online, it's, just it's hard. Yeah, you have to make content that who are the most people on the internet? Women in this environment. So even for you to do that as a guy, it's already a very hard line to cross. So what kind of content mm-hmm. is going to resonate with fact, them to relate? I used to run, I used to run an influencer marketing let's company, right? This. And a lot of a lot of um, like influencers are guys that we're working with. They were either like comedians or like exactly something so what else they were either like, like or they're artists or something like they're not just they like, like they were not just people no they were people. not just a lot of them are not just so people. some some people are exactly. some some are so, mm. but see, no, so here's the thing the basis of even being mm. an influencer starts from one how many followers because that's what it is you can't influence people if you don't have people even your following follow. yes your followers so, your um your engagements now, very important now yeah. the way the followers work or the way people select who to use to influence mm-hmm. is one, of course, your followership, your, followers, and so your engagement, your costs. Your yeah. get. Mm-hmm. This is why already it's easier for the women. Because yeah, because they get all more they need to do is just post one something that is mad. Just, just something. This yeah. is someone. There's no. That's you know, fact. No, yeah, that's no, fact. This is yeah, not yeah, discrediting the influencing, mm-hmm. right? But this is all just staying, saying what it is, mm-hmm. right? This is why I'm saying this because you mentioned that guys don't do so much when it comes to influence. Like guys mm-hmm. don't put in the passion. Not that they in don't quotes. put in the passion. The people that are doing it are passionate, but not a lot of guys are doing it. Because if you exactly. compare, if you compare so Nigeria to America now, there are a lot of male influencers there because that environment... Really? Yeah, bro. I don't yes. know. I don't know. Uh, bro, yeah. in terms of... Okay, yeah. it's a joke we like to say. Fine boy hair doesn't... Like, for example, okay, boy, fine yeah. boy hair doesn't <laughs> sell. Like, you know how, how we would are, you like, know? Huh? No <laughs> comment. <laughs> but like, I'm not that, you, <laughs> like, for example, if you do fine boy here, we know the environment we're in now. Everybody will say, "Fine, are you two? You're doing fine boy and all mm-hmm. that." So the comfortability even get out there mm-hmm. is hard. While in America now, yo, boys are doing fine boy posing and all that, and they're mm-hmm. getting the same likes as women. Mm-hmm. Okay. So the okay. thing. So, like, so, the, so the thing is this, right? Some fine boys in Lagos to also take that advantage because okay. I mean, you already know that on your page you get engagements and everything. Mm-hmm. It's just, mm-hmm. but you see, it's there still has to be an extra something from the guy like mm. i still have to make the content so engaging if i'm a, oh, if, if a babe and i'm advertising sprites mm-hmm. all i literally need Fine to girl, do post a cup like this bam that's all. but it's engaging now if it's not engaging, so they're not engaging with it. We do the same thing now. Like the, that's what I said. We yeah. do the same thing. No matter because of the environment we're in, it's not going to get anything. Yeah, so that's that's that's, that's also fact. Yeah, easier for women. That's my point. Okay, in that yeah yeah. 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 So like, for okay. example, like how in music is harder because 
there's so much at stake. There's so much. Like involved. even if you mm-hmm. didn't say that, I wouldn't have thought about that with the it's female just perspective exactly. in terms of they have to get so many. No, yeah, in like, music shout that one I can say because that one I know very well. Like because yeah. like, I know influencing, for example, is difficult for yeah. a guy to just break it. But then the it also depends. Like this thing, I. I kind of agree with you guys on this influencing thing, but because I've actually been on the other side, True, I'm okay. not. I'm not so sure that's because that's like there's different like different products you're selling, right? Oh, there's also that. Yeah. There's always different products you're selling, and depending on the product that you're selling, I've seen. I've actually seen brands like say they don't want to work with this influencer because like this female influencer because like she's showing her body too much. Yeah, friends. so her mm. content is not Do you understand? Really, mm. doesn't like, resonate yeah, with her like I've not seen a lot of situations like especially if you're getting money from like big brands, corporates, some of them will say or like she there's some the but she, they don't want to work with her. Yeah, they'll say that oh this person is dressed like this, they don't want to work with this person. Oh, you know, wow. like the, yeah, it happens a lot. Okay, well Do you get? The, the, but then again, like of course like the like the I, I think the engagement thing that you guys said it also like it also goes to a point. But then when you're now when you're looking at the top of the funnel it's quite balanced too. I w- sometimes there even a, there, are, there are a lot of guys up there, you know, at the top of the funnel. Yeah. But yeah, like probably it like. Really but then me, I noticed like said, that yeah. like influencers, the people that you guys are even talking about, I'm not sure that those people like the base I guys talk. They're not like a lot of those people are not actually like influencers. Influencers, influencers like working with. Like when you brand. go on an influencers page, I see like every like major brand fifteen every brand. fifteen twenty posts like. Oh, sorry, not every 15, every five posts, you know, there's a brand that's working. Bro, mm. just, wow, they are hustling, bro. They are, they are actually working hard. They are making engaging content, like reels and stuff. Because like, they're really sending stuff. Yeah, right. See, ah, they are true. cutting, true, they are doing, true, true. like, yeah. as like in, you can people are submitting content. are actually putting in the work. Yeah, people are submitting content saying, to me. You're, you're saying you're an influencer. Fine, fine is, not, big... is not enough, bro. Trust me. Right. It's not enough. Because of time, something. we can get so, into this. This is why I said, you see why we like menisms, because we will go into these debates for a while, but because of time, <laughs> yeah. we have to shut it down. But again, make sure you guys comment on this on YouTube, you know, yeah. say your thoughts, opinions, and we'll definitely read them out. Of course, thank you to our guest, Adjo Butter, for stopping by. Yeah, make sure yeah. you guys go check out the new album. I mean, again, another self plug for the album. Yeah, man. Listen to Soundtrack to the Good Life, man. It's, it's very soft. It's a nice album. In fact, not a nice album. It's amazing. And you know the theme is just it's just for you to enjoy yourself, have a good time. And be no, exactly. There's a whole song on there called much. Enjoyment. Like so there's funny. literally a song called Enjoyment. There's a song called Soft Life. You know, there's a song called Ama Piano and Shisha. So you know the kind of vibe you're gonna get already. All, All right. right. So, so until next time, guys. Yeah. So I'm Mara Welcome Koya. It's Michael Scenario again. Make sure you subscribe, and we'll see you guys next time. Yep. All right. Bless.